Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm looking at this faulty Keurig K-Supreme coffee maker, which suddenly lost all power and now won't turn on at all. Now this is my first time diving into a coffee maker of any kind. So this is gonna be kind of cool to work on something new and see what makes these Keurigs tick. Now, as you can see, we have the coffee maker plugged in and we press this power button, there's absolutely no signs of life. Now this appears to be a pretty common occurrence among the K-Supreme and K-Supreme Plus models. And most of the time, it seems like it comes down to a trip thermal switch inside uh, that cuts off the power supply internally to the entire machine. Now in this video, I'm gonna go through the steps on how to take the main case off of this Keurig and reset that thermal switch. Uh, you're gonna see later that unfortunately I have some bigger problems it looks like going on with this one. So it's not gonna fix all of my problems. We will get power restored to it, but hopefully you'll be in a different boat. And uh, if you go through these steps, reset that thermal switch, you'll have your coffee maker restored and ready for use again. As part of my very first step of checks, I'm gonna make sure that we have a good power supply, which I know that outlet is good. And then I'm gonna make sure that we're obviously pushing this power button nice and firm, which I am. So that takes care of all the obvious issues out of the way first. Um, at this point, we're gonna unplug the power cord and we're gonna ditch the water tank back here and then we can start diving into the machine itself. All right, before I flip this over, I'm gonna pull this tray off first. Pretty much anything loose, we wanna get it out of the way. So now from my understanding, there's a few screws on the underside. I know there's one under each of these two rubber feet. So let's go ahead and pop those off. And I believe under this panel as well. Okay, so there's nothing under this panel, but I think if we pull off this tab here, it looks like we have another screw. So I believe this one and then these two, we'll pull those out and this uh, outer shell should come off with no problem. So the last screw is putting up a bit of a fight here. Okay, so that's all three screws out. Now to start releasing this outer shell, there are some tabs here. Basically wanna release those while also providing outward pressure. So I'm gonna see here, maybe we can't get this started by hand. Might need two screwdrivers for this step, one to kind of pull these tabs, and then one to provide some pressure on the case. I'm sorry, ignore this tab actually, that one Looks like we got one here and one here to release this side of the case. So now that's starting to come loose. I had a toothpick handy, so I'll just uh, stuff that in this seam here just to keep that from relatching on me. So let's go ahead and see if we can pop this other side free. this tab in here. And this tab down here. Okay, so I have both sides started. You can see that gap there. I just jammed a couple toothpicks in there. It's pretty much whatever you can find, flathead screwdriver, toothpick, whatever, just to keep it from snapping back into place. So this should be pretty much loose. We're gonna carefully flip it back over. Now we are going to open 
top here. Okay, so I fought with this for a second. Come to find out there are actually two more tabs, one here and then one right in under here, underneath the power cord there for this back panel. So this is all gonna come off in one piece as far as the shell is concerned. So now we can flip it back over. And it's just a matter of fanning the case out and pulling up over the, uh, the main head of the unit here. So let's try to do that now. We'll go ahead and open the top here so we have less handle to lift the casing up over. As you can see, there's just enough room on either side that we can kind of fan this out while pulling up. I might have to actually fan it out on the inside here too. Yeah, there we go. You see, you don't want to put too much pressure on the plastic and break it, but I think now that the front is fanned out, we can kind of tip it a little bit. And just kind of wiggle back and forth. pressure on it and then straight up it should come there we have it so now with the case off we can access our heating coil and the uh, thermal switch which you can see right inside there is that white circular piece uh, I'm going to confirm it's tripped by using this multimeter. We're going to put it on our continuity setting, and I'm going to put probes across the terminals here, and you can see nothing changes. So that's basically telling us the switch is open. It's not going to allow any current to go through. Basically what happens is when the heating coil here gets too hot, an element inside the thermal switch trips and opens a power supply circuit, kind of like the breaker in your house. So before resetting it, I want to make sure that there's no signs of a thermal event in the form of any melted plastic or burning wires or anything like that. If we have any signs of larger widespread damage, uh, like something else got really hot and maybe there's a bigger issue, we might have more issues than we originally bargained for, and we probably shouldn't restore power to this unit. So I've had a chance to kind of look everything over as far as the internals. I don't see any signs of melted plastic or burning wires or anything like that, which tells me that uh, that thermal switch has done its job and has prevented any widespread issue from occurring in the rest of the machine. So since everything looks good here, I'm going to take a paper clip and we're just going to fan it out on the end like that. I'm going to press it into the small hole on the side of the thermal switch to reset it. Work around this green wire here. It almost felt like there was a small click when I pushed in on it, so I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and confirm with our multimeter. We're gonna put this across the two terminals again. And there we go, that switch is now closed, and we should be back in business. I'm gonna do a real quick test to make sure that this unit is working. I'm gonna to recommend to you guys that if you're gonna do this, have the plastic cover installed before you plug it back in. Whenever you have this plugged in, there's a lot of uh, live stuff back here. You don't wanna to touch anything. So I'm going to recommend you just have the cover installed to be on the safe side. But in my case, I want to make sure that there is no other issues and that everything's working before I go and close the hood on this thing. So already we have a couple lights flashing on top here, which is a good sign. And you can see it now switches on and off with the power supply. So I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together. We're going to put some water in the water tank and I'm going to run a cycle on it and see if it's We're working. Go ahead and slide the case back on. Actually, I want this back open. And keep in mind we got it unplugged there for safety. We're going to go ahead and kind of pull out ever so slightly and fan the case out. Let's see if we can work it back on the machine here without too much drama.
couple tangs here at the front here. We gotta pull this front part out to get it down over. And we'll just kind of massage the middle and the back here into place. Push down nice and firm all the way around. I want to make sure that seam looks like everything's latched down below. There's no looseness in the case. We can go ahead and get rid of this tape. It's been on there since new. Great. We'll reinstall our drip tray. I've got the water tank all filled up here, ready to go. Now I just need to grab a mug and we can try it out. All right, so now that everything's back together, let's go ahead and plug it back in. Got my favorite Rick and Morty mug here. Let's go ahead and try, see if it's gonna brew. All right, so that's what I was afraid of. You can see here, hopefully you guys can see that. The power light flashes a few times and we only have the 10 and 12 ounce settings available. So that tells me there's probably something bigger going on, maybe some sort of internal fault the circuitry. Um, it seems to be a pretty common problem. I know in the case of this one, all these problems started when the owner is trying to do a descale. So my concern is maybe it got run low on water and uh, maybe had maybe things got too hot, tripped that thermal switch and maybe caused you know some more damage elsewhere. Um, it seems like that's a pretty common problem as well with this model and these models are kind of cheap. So I don't know how much more time I'm really gonna spend on this. I might throw this on a shelf and come back to it at some point but honestly i think at this point we're just going to replace this one and call it a day so as i said earlier hopefully you guys had a different outcome than i did in this case and uh, i'm hoping that yours is back up and running and working for you for a little bit longer i have heard instances of people being in the same boat that i am and calling and giving their serial number to keurig and getting a free replacement under warranty now this one's a few years old so i don't know if that's gonna be a viable option i will let the owner know about that and see if that's something they want to pursue but I think I'm going to close it up on this one. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.